In this video I'll be showing how I built my new mitre station. It'll have a few of the usual features and a few unusual ones too, including a passive dust collection drawer, T-track and stop blocks for repeatable cuts, and a hood and shroud to help contain dust. It's also going to accommodate some of my larger machines like my thickness planer and bench belt and disc sander underneath. And that's going to be a real space saver. And those are going to have dust shrouds too. I began by designing what I wanted to build in SketchUp and full plans and detailed cut lists for this build are going to be available for free to my Patreon patrons or at a small fee via my Etsy store and you'll find links to those pages in the description box below. The first job was to start marking up and cutting all of my panels to size and I did most of that cutting with the track saw at my new MFT work table which was covered in a recent project video too. All of the plywood I'm using for this project is reclaimed and that's why it all looks a little bit dirty and grubby. Most of it I picked up from my local reclamation yard and some of it I got via Facebook marketplace for not very much money. I used the table saw to cut down the smaller, more manageable pieces to size and the mitre saw to cut the pieces to length. The parts that I'm making at the moment are the two cabinets that will sit either side of the mitre saw and they're both going to be identical. Each of them are made up of two side panels, a top and a bottom panel at the back, which I'm using instead of a solid panel just to get the most from the material that I had to work with, plus a top panel which will provide extra thickness and rigidity to the top, and a small front panel which is going to be set in slightly from the front to make space for fitting the dust shrouds that will be added later on. To assemble I just used ordinary PVA wood glue, butt joints and screws, first assembling the side panels to the two back panels, Then I added the top panel and I did that with the unit upside down just to make things easier. And then I flipped it over the right way up so that I could mark up the offset ready for the front panel to be added. I then added wood glue to the face of the top panel and the top edges of the other panels ready for the top to be added. I had a few pieces of marine hardwood plywood and I decided to use that for the tops because it was generally better looking. And that got secured from underneath with a few screws and then I clamped down the edges. I then flipped the unit upside down again because I'm going to be adding some adjustable height feet to the bottom. I got these from Amazon, I'll leave a link to them below. Each foot has a T-nut and then the foot itself which has a threaded bolt and rubber on the bottom. They are not the best quality but I expected that at the price I paid but they do work okay and fitting them was easy. I just marked up where I wanted them, drilled an 8mm hole, hammered the T-nuts in place and then screwed in the feet. At this point I sanded everything mainly just to clean off all of the dirt. I sanded at 80 grit and then 120 grit and I used my high Koki sander for this mainly because it has a turbo setting which speed things up nicely but also because my Merca D-Ross sander that I usually use which cost me a small fortune by the way completely stopped working recently and I'll probably talk about that in a future video. I then gave all of the faces of the units a coat of water based varnish to make all the panels more hard wearing. After the first coat I could get the units in position. And later on I denibbed the first coat of varnish and added a second coat. I had no idea that marine plywood looks this good when varnished. It kind of looks like teak. I think it looks awesome. Next I could start thinking about the central unit that will hold the mitre saw itself. And before I could design it I needed to spend some time manoeuvring the saw into all of its many tilted and swiveled positions so that I could measure up the total footprint because I wanted to make sure that the cabinet would be big enough to not restrict any of its movements. This cabinet would need to be shorter in height than the other two units by the height of the base of the mitre saw. I didn't need to worry about precision here because the final adjustments can be made with the adjustable feet later on but I did want to get it as close as possible. The design of this cabinet would be pretty similar to the others, two side panels, two back panels, one at the top one at the bottom, a top panel and a thin front panel but this time the front panel would be mounted flush to the front rather than offset from the front. And just after I added the adjustable feet to the bottom this is where I encountered my first problem of the project. I have a slight problem. I positioned these feet 
the same distance in on both units uh, and obviously they protrude at the side so these two units aren't going to sit together unless I move these feet. It was a simple fix though, I could pry out the T-nuts while the bolt was still fitted, drill new holes and install them again and problem solved. Then I could cut a top panel, again using the marine plywood, and then I put the saw on top to see how things were looking. So one of the features that I wanted to incorporate into my new mitre station was a dust collection drawer, and that's because at my old mitre station, all the dust that didn't get captured by the dust extractor ended up behind the mitre saw, and it was a really awkward and annoying job to clean it out. I already had lots of drawer runners left over from a previous project. These are just the cheap ones, but they work great. The construction of this drawer is going to be really simple. I just ripped some 12 mm plywood down at the table saw to the depth I wanted the drawers to be. And then I could cut two side panels plus a front panel and back panel to length. Then I cut a bottom panel using the same 12 mm plywood to the size of the drawer. And I just checked that everything fitted together okay. Then I glue and clamp all of the panels to the drawer bottom. To fit the drawer runners, I mark up where I want them on both side panels and it's important to make sure to leave a bit of clearance at the top so that the drawers can drop in later on. I use my speed square to mark up a horizontal line which will represent where the bottom of the drawer runner will be. And then I can hold it in place marking up the hole positions with an awl before adding the screws. The other halves of the drawer runners get fixed to either the sides or the bottom of the drawer depending on however you want to mount them. In this footage you can see that the runners I'm using are way too short for the size of the drawer that I'm installing, but I'm just using up what I had really. I could have really done with some 750mm runners here, and mine are only 450 but they'll still do the job, I just won't be able to open the drawer fully, which means I'll have to kind of scrape out the dust or vacuum it out like in this dramatic reconstruction. I'll probably replace the runners one day later down the line, but for now this will be fine. Next I offer up the mitre saw into its final position and I can mark around the feet to determine what areas of the top panel I can cut away to allow the dust to drop into the drawer beneath. After marking up a shape that I was happy with, I drilled a clearance hole for my jigsaw blade and then made the cuts. This left some rough edges so I did a bit of sanding to clean them up. The top still wasn't fitted at this point so the next job was to add glue and then secure it in place. Once the glue was dry I could then position the saw and drill holes for the saw to be mounted to the top using some bolts. Here I'm tightening the nut on the underside of the top with a spanner to get a nice secure fixing. The final job which will be covered in this video was to get everything sitting level and height adjusted. I started with getting things level at the mitre saw both from left to right and also front to back, making adjustments using the height adjustable feet. Once that looked good I moved on to the cabinets at the side. And to position those, I offered up a straight edge onto the mitre saw base, aiming to get all three units flush with one another. On one side it was pretty close to being the perfect height, but the other side was way off at the far edge as you can see here, and on the other side it was slightly too low down. I found that it was pretty useful to use a wedge of wood to lift the units to the correct height to take the weight off the feet, and that made them much easier to twist and adjust. I don't mind admitting that this probably took me way longer than it should have taken. I was at this for well over an hour, probably closer to two, trying to get everything just right. But I got there eventually, and once everything looked good, I drove in some screws to secure the units together. This was a big project and there's way too much here to cover in one video so please join me again for part 2. Once that's available you'll find a link to it in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you'd like to help support the channel you can do so on Patreon where you can receive early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, 
exclusive content and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.